Hey everybody, Ace of Garrick here at the Second Chance Garage and we are going to finish this guy up today. I'm going to put the stripes on it. Um, I've got some vinyl stencils I created. Um, I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Um, so this guy's been uh, cooking for a couple of weeks now so I think the clear is all cured up and everything. It's ready to go. Um, as you can see, it's still really, really shiny so I didn't get any dye back on the uh, the clear or anything, or at least nothing noticeable. Um, first order of business is I'm going to sand this down with 600 on the DA uh, to give it a cut here so I can put the, the stripes on. Uh, the stripes are going to be the PPG and Vibrabase Waterborne again. Um, I've got the white and the black. Um, I didn't end up using the blue. I didn't feel like buying blue just to run that test. I'll run that test when the time comes. Um, to actually paint it for real, find out if I like that or not. So anyway, uh, let me get this guy sanded down with 600 and we'll move on to the next step. So this thing was so rough from uh, all the dirt and crap that got in it, and plus I had it sitting outside for about a week. Um, I decided to hit it with some 400 um, to try and smooth it down, get all the crap out. I'm not sure whether that would be a good idea on an actual paint job or not if you then follow that up with 600 and lay it down. Um, I don't know. Um, but one of the interesting things I noticed here um, after hitting it with the 400 is you notice again that uneven pattern in it. And these are all the same places where all the metallics were pooling and collecting. Um, so what appears to be the case is that these are all low spots. I mean they're not you can't feel them, but you sand them, and they're certainly there. And uh, that's interesting. I think even that much of a low spot is enough for the metallics to fall down into the, the little valleys there, it looks like. Um, you know, this was a really bad spot right here, and I've been working on that to try and flatten it out a little bit. But that's kind of interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Um, so had this thing been properly prepared and guide-coated and everything, maybe I wouldn't have even had that problem. But maybe it's not the pro primary problem after all. Who knows? Anyway, uh, I'm just I'm done with this part with the uh, 400. So now I'm gonna hit it with the 600 again, and then it should be ready. So anyway, I think it's good enough for that purpose. Uh, we're gonna stop here and get the stencils. Uh, I'll insert the piece of the video right here that shows how I made the stencils, and we'll get them on the the panel here. All right, so here's the stencil layout that I'm working on for the Z28 stripe test. Um, so what I have here is some Aura Mask um, templates, uh, stencil, stencil vinyl. Um, I used uh, a few different types here because I wasn't sure which is the one that's going to work the best. Um, so this one here is the pick that up, Aura Mask 810S, which is for solvent. Um, this one here is the 810, which is supposedly for waterborne, which should be the, the right one. Um, and then this is an 813, which I don't think is the right one at all, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, I got this little variety pack here from uh, what the vinyl store. I can't remember the name of it. I'll put it in the description. Um, of four of each of these different things, 12 by 12 for, it's like 10 bucks. It was really cheap. Um, ordinarily, you have to buy this stuff by like, a, I think, a 100-yard roll or something. So it's a lot of mice, like 70 or 80 bucks for a roll. And I wasn't sure which one I needed, so I got that little test kit there. Um, and that may be actually enough for all I ever need. Um, anyway, so I have three different styles here to try out. And for the purposes of this test, what I did is I just laid this stuff out on the computer in um, Illustrator. So this is all vector graphics in Illustrator. Um, and printed it out on um, paper and just stuck the sheets together. Let me see right here. So, very, very cheesy way, and this is not the way you would do it in real life, but just for the test, I did this. So I laid out the, the whole pattern across here, and then took my tr trusty X-Acto knife and cut this whole thing out, which was a lot of work. Um, um, as I said, if this works and it comes out nice, then I need to find a place online that can do this vinyl cutting for me, or um, I'll get a vinyl cutter myself and do it. I'm not sure. So what we're looking at right here is the stencil for the red, or uh, for the white rather, sorry. So 
the trunk is red right now. So this stencil is going to go down here and everything that you see that's white is going to get white paint on it. So it's going to mask off the outside of the trunk here and I'll put uh, masking tape all around that so all the outside is going to stay red. Um, and then you'll have this stripe in here is a red pinstripe um, that goes around everything. And then all the rest of this is white. And then over here I have the stencil for the black can see. Um, so here again everything, sorry, <laughs> turn the camera the right way. Um, everything you see here that's clear is going to get black. That's how that's going to work. Um, in the actual stripe there's this outer band of it here. There's a blue pin stripe that goes around there. Um, I'm not going to do that for this test because I don't have any blue paint and I'm not going to buy blue paint just for it. So I'll do that with black. So there'll be a black line around here, then you'll see a little bit of white, then the red, then some white, then the black. But anyway, um, for those of you that don't know how this stuff works, um, so the, the stencil material here has its backing paper on it. So you just cut this stuff out and peel off all the vinyl. This is what the vinyl looks like, the 810. That's the, the dark one's the 810S and the blue one. Um, so peel all that stuff off. And when this is done now, then you take your application tape, this stuff, and then that's going to go across this, which is what I did here. So you're actually looking at the, the tape there. So I've covered this whole thing up with tape. So then when you're ready to put it on, you can peel off this backing paper, and the application tape will hold all the stencil material in the right place until it's on the car. And then you can peel the application tape off, and only the vinyl here will be left on the car goes according to plan. So we're going to give it a try. Um, it's going to be very hacky and I'm sure the lines aren't going to all line up right because I did this in two separate pieces and so it's going to be wonky but it'll at least tell if the general idea is going to work and how well this stencil material works as far as preventing bleed through and stuff. Um, we'll see. It's got little squeegees here to squeegee it all down and everything. Anyway, that's that. All right, I have the stencil approximately where I think I want it to go. Um, if I didn't mention this before, I think I did. Um, this isn't the proper place for these graphics to go. They're supposed to go on the, the back of the spoiler, um, but I'm not painting the spoiler, so I'm just going to do it on here as the test, and then the stripes run up from here. So I've got this down. So I take the application tape, and squeegee it down good, hopefully get it to stick good there and then I have to pick it up and then start peeling off the stencil material from underneath I mean the on the stencil backing paper so I guess uh, I don't know this corner is as good a place to start as any I'm going to take this back There. I need to start peeling off the backing paper. Now, in theory, you're supposed to do this a little bit as you go. Well, that might be kind of hard with this thing being so huge, so I'm just going to try peeling this back here. See if I can get it to everything stay in place. The application tape looks like it's working perfectly. Everything's staying exactly where it's supposed to. That's good. So I'll get the next one to go here. Put this one on the top. Yeah. Oh, that's ripped. This one, since I cut it with the X-Acto knife, I got a little too aggressive with it and I cut through the backing paper too, which is considering this deck lid is not flat. 
So I'm going to start at the center here. tape right there. My application tape's not big enough to go all the way across. It's going on okay. tape and hopefully the vinyl stays behind if we did everything right. Looking good. I also would have put this graphic a little lower to give a better visual, but there's all those holes down there where the spoiler goes. As I mentioned in the stencil video, I have three different types of stencil material in here. I'm not sure which one is going to work best. Um, so right here is the seams. So I've got to be careful as I come through here not to lift it up. It's all working well. And there's another seam a little further down here. Perfectly there. Okay, here's the next seam. Oh, there you go, that lifted right there. So this final one here is the 810S. It seems to be the least sticky because it's lifting. And again, when I do this for real, this stuff would be printed on a on a vinyl cutter and it would all be one big piece so I wouldn't have these seams in the middle so I wouldn't have these problems that I'm having right now. This is all lifting up right here. <clears throat> so this stuff does not stick as well as the other two, clearly. A little sliver that came off right there, cut in the vinyl. Persist. I have my exacto knife here. Oh, that's going to be ugly right there. Yeah, right there. It broke. Alright, so let's get the exacto knife out of here. A little failure right there. Cut that. Not very sticky compared to the other stuff. Wow, it really lifts up easily. Of course, this is a tiny, tiny little vinyl stripe I'm trying to put on here, which doesn't help. Just to lift off this 
way. I don't know if you can see all that lifting that's happening there. Oh, that's a bear right there. I may have to pull that one off and do it by hand. It doesn't look like it's going to want to do what I want it to there. Yeah. All right, so the A10S, I don't like. No, sir, I don't like it. than the other one. All right, there we go. So flatten that out. And then we got to find a way to get this on the right place here. It left a little imprint on the paint underneath. Kind of see where it needs to go. Something like that. Probably not exactly right, but yeah, we're not going for perfection here. Okay, that's it. Put this away here. So go over everything. Right, make sure it's all stuck down good. No bubbles anywhere. So the edges are down flat. tape on there. This side work better. Two sides of the squeegee, I don't know which one's better for what I'm doing here. So this is the stencil for the white, so I'll mask off everything from here on out and this little bit in the center here will be the red stripe that goes in the middle of the logo. So lay that down, I'll run the stripes up to the top here and then it's ready for paint. Alright, we're all set here. All masked up, at least I think it's correct. I'll use the blue fine line tape everywhere to finish up the lines. Um, this A10S stuff over here, this whole corner of the Z just peeled right off, so I had to make some out of the blue line tape. Um, I tried to make the width of these lines one eighth of an inch to match the fine line tape, and you can see it's close, but not exactly the same. So when the time comes to lay these stripes out, I'm going to have to think about that, how I want to do that, um, since it doesn't exactly match. I don't want to print the whole stripe with a stencil. I can, I guess, but anyway. All right, this guy's ready to go, I think. So we're going to mix up the white paint. Remember, the white is the tri-coat, uh, so i got to put the white base down and then the, uh, the mid-coat. Let me do that. All right, we're ready for the first coat. I'm going to put a light coat on to hopefully allow it to get on there and make a layer that's not too wet so it doesn't get underneath all the stencils. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, from the last video, remember I was having all the problems with all that junk coming out of my paint, so I got a new 3M hose just for spray painting. I had my normal flex hose for all my air tools and stuff, and I'll save this one just for painting, so hopefully that'll keep it in good shape. Alright, time to put some paint on.
All right, it's time for the mid coat on the white now. Put the control code on now and be done with it. All right, we're going to peel back. Uh, inside stripe now. Uh, did that come off yet? No, actually that stays on. I gotta put the black stencil over the top of this and then I peel everything off I think is the right approach. Hmm. Choices. So, yeah, that's what I need to do. Alright, I gotta go get the other stencil. <laughs> well, I guess that answers that question. Um, I just laid the thing down on there to see if I could get it lined up and obviously the paint wasn't dry. Just ripped up all that paint right there. And it felt dry to the, the touch it, there's nothing coming back, but it wasn't, so I'm gonna let that cook for a while before I can do anything. Uh, I, I, again, I'm not worried about it getting messed up because this is a test, so I'm not gonna bother trying to fix it or anything. Now, if I were doing this for real, I would have put an inner coat clear down between these coats and let it dry maybe overnight, I don't know, to be extra safe, uh, but yeah, I'm just messing around here. Uh, I still don't know if this is exactly good yet, but I don't want to be here all day. I'm going to put some of the application tape down and tested it and it didn't, didn't seem to cause any damage. But uh, this is going to be tricky to lay this one out because I can't really see what I'm doing underneath. Last time I just tried to line up on the edge, which is good, but then I didn't really see that line right there. Hey, Sharpie. Camera battery died right in the middle of that. Sorry. I was just lamenting how poorly this 810S sticks. Right there. Get these pieces to go back. 
back into place. So all the stuff over here stuck just fine. Um, again, it was just the A10S that didn't stick. So I'll hit it with the uh, squeegee here. Trying to get my bubbles out. I can't be too aggressive with this because the paint's really not cured completely. And as I said before, are doing this for real. I would have an interval clear on it so that I could wouldn't have to be so careful with it. All right, that's it. So I'm going to now take the um, the fine line tape and finish this up. All these areas that are gray or blue, I'm going to have to mask off going up that way. So a little bit more work to do. All right, it's all masked up at least I think. It's kind of a complex pattern as you can see. This part is black, so it goes black, red, white, black. I think it's correct, but I'm just going to shoot it. It's getting late. I want to get this done. As with the white, we're going to start with a light coat there, not go too heavy so it doesn't bleed under the tape. comedy of errors here. Uh, I remembered after I sprayed the first two coats, that light coat and the second coat, that I hadn't put any reducer <laughs> in the paint. Oops! Um, so I fixed that. This coat went on more like it was supposed to. I don't know if you could see in the video or not, but it goes on kind of blue um, with the water in it and then it all evaporates out and the blue goes away and you end up with this color. So it's all nice and matte now so I'm ready for the last coat. And then hopefully I have enough left over for the control coat because I don't think I got enough paint. So that's good to try.
right, here we go. Moment of truth. Peel that all that stuff off and see what happened. You get the idea. All right, so there we go. I made lots of mistakes today, um, not the least of which that black stripe is not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be white all the way up. But you get an idea of what this thing's supposed to look like. Um, for the stencil material, the 810S, as you can see, a lot of blow through. Not really that good. As we saw at the beginning, it didn't really stick very well. Uh, the 810, which is the one I think I was supposed to use, um, actually worked really well, I think. And again, if the stencils had been all lined up properly, I think this would have been perfect. Um, I don't really see any blow through anywhere. A little, a little bit of bleed through right there on the white, just a hair. Um, so that came out nice. The 813, I think, worked the best of all, but it's really, really tacky. It's pretty hard to get off, and you kind of have to dig into it with the X-Acto knife to get it out, so I ended up hitting the paint in a few places, um, which isn't good. So I don't think I like that. It's a little, a little too harsh. Um, but it worked. 
worked really well. So if you can get the uh, you can get the mask off, uh, that, that worked pretty nice. Getting a nice clean edge, no bleed throughs, no blow throughs anywhere that I can see. It's nice. All right, so this thing's done. Um, I was hoping there wouldn't be much of an edge because the the waterborne is about half of the the dry fill dry build thickness dry film thickness than uh, solvent. It's only uh, like 0.7 um, mil. So I was hoping it wouldn't have a huge edge here. It's got a pretty good edge on it. Uh, this is a tri coat white, which I'm sure didn't help matters. Um, but anyway, so this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shoot the clear on it and be done with it. I'm gonna put uh, probably one light coat and then two heavy coats of clear and just call it done. Um, and then I'm gonna later on, maybe, uh, uh, cut and buff it and see how good that clear holds up to cut and buff uh, with a couple heavy coats and see if it, if you blow through it anywhere. Anyway, as you can see, um, the paint sprayed out real nice. Um, looks really good. These are the areas where that the thing's stuck. Uh, the, the stencil stuck. That's why that's all destroyed. Um, but the rest of this has got this really nice smooth finish. Um, some crap got in it here. Um, I'm pretty sure that happened after I sprayed it. There's something blew into it. You know, a gust of wind came in or something with the door open. So not ideal. Um, but it's pretty clean. So and you can see the white. Uh, there's really not any junk in the white or anything, so the white came out nice. So was, I wasn't having those problems with the big chunks of junk flying out of my gun again. So I don't know if it was the hose or if I cleaned the gun better. I don't know. But anyway, let me get the clear mixed up and shot on here. We'll call it a day.
All right, that's it for today. I would love to be able to show you this in the sun and see how awesome those paint colors are, but it's all cloudy today. No sun. So I think it all came out pretty good. Um, you know, I did make a few mistakes, as I pointed out. Um, the clear laid out pretty nicely. I don't see a lot of junk in it and stuff. Now it's pretty smooth, as you can see. You got a nice, nice orange peel on it. Good. No runs again. Looks like I'm figuring out how this clear works. So that's good. Let me know uh, what you guys think of the stripe. I think it's pretty sweet. Um, it's different. Like I said, you don't see a lot of cars with that on there, so it's cool. Uh, anyway, that is going to do it for this thing for a while. Like I said, I might uh, try and cut and buff it to see if I can get rid of the bump over the stripe, but let's see. Let me show you that. Still quite a bit of a, a bump there on that stripe. So I put uh, three fairly wet coats of clear on there. Um, so I might try that in a few weeks uh, to sand it down and see if I can sand those sand that edge out or not. We'll see. I need to get back to work on my car. I don't enough farting around with paint. Anyway, uh, take it easy, guys. Hope you all are having a good weekend. And take it easy. Talk to you soon. Bye.